So I now want to consider, could I solve for the motion if, in this case, instead of having a function of time for my force, I have a function of velocity. So let me remind you, before what we were doing is I have acceleration as some function of time. Acceleration, so let's call that function f of t. The acceleration is really the time derivative of the velocity. So I can multiply both sides by dt and then integrate. And provided that I can actually do this integral, then I would have an expression for v of t. But that works because I already have f of t, and I know how to integrate with respect to t. In this case, I have an acceleration that is a function of v, and I want to go through the procedure that we're going to use. It's called separation of variables. Just out of curiosity, how many of you have done separation of variables? In what context? In, in the last semester? or in high school? Ah, okay. So let me isolate So let me isolate and say that the drag force looks like this and it's going to be proportional to the velocity and I'm going to take acceleration that way. And we're in the bubble, so all I have is this force on the particle which has mass m. Okay, and we'll take the force of drag to be kappa times the velocity. So f equals ma means fd with a minus because it's opposite to the direction I picked. Looks like that. The force of drag is minus kappa v, and that is equal to m. And now I want to write the acceleration in a way that brings out v. So I'm going to write it as dv dt. Yeah. So at, we had Stokes's formula, which was that the drag force was 6 pi and a viscosity and a radius. All of those are constants and then multiplying v. So I'm just lumping all those constants together as, and calling it kappa and saying I'm considering a drag force that is proportional to the velocity. So that's very general. Okay? So that's the equation that we have to solve, Lydia. How is it accelerating to the right if, so I'm, maybe I should say, this is the direction I'm choosing as positive for x. Will that make you happier? So I will say, I'm going to use a coordinate to describe the position. x goes that way. This acceleration means d2x dt squared. So if x is positive that way, I have to define d2x dt squared is positive in the same way. I may end up getting a negative sign. In fact, by the time I'm down here, you're going to see I already got the negative sign. Okay, But I think that makes sense because the, the drag is actually going to be slowing the particle down, so I have acceleration opposite to the velocity. Good question. Are we good? Bonnie, are you okay with that? I got a thumb. All right. So, what kind of motion is this going to give us? Well, it says that the faster you're going, the more the drag. Right? So, let's say we start with some velocity, v naught. Initially, we have a time rate of change of velocity. Maybe I should slide the m over to the other side. How about dv dt is equal to 
minus kappa v over m. So the time rate of change of the velocity is proportional to the velocity. It's biggest when the velocity is greatest. So maybe I have a slope like that there. But as the velocity comes down, the slope has to be less, and then less, and then less. So I might expect, I don't know, some kind of decreasing curve, right? Let's see if we can solve for that. This is time. So what I want to do, the strategy is I want to put the v's on one side and I want to put the t's on the other side. That's called separating the variables. So I will cross multiply in essence and have dv over v is equal to minus kappa over m times dt. And now having separated, I can integrate. What are the limits? So I want to start at some initial velocity, v naught, and I want to go to some velocity at a later time. So the corresponding time is time 0, and some time later is going to be t. And if you're fussy, then you'll say, these aren't supposed to be the same. This is a dummy variable of integration. These aren't supposed to be the same. That's a dummy variable of integration. And you can put a prime on it. If you're not fussy, you can ignore that. OK? What do I get for the integral on the left? Natural log of v prime to be evaluated between v and v naught is equal to minus kappa over m, and the integral is now t prime to be evaluated between 0 and t. So this thing says to subtract the log of v minus the log of v naught. But that always makes me queasy, because I hate taking the logarithm of something that has units. So fortunately, the log of v minus the log of v naught can be rewritten using a nice property of logs, namely what? Log of v over v naught. And that's clearly a dimensionless ratio, which makes me a whole lot happier, <laughs> even though it's mathematically the same. OK, is equal to minus k kappa over m times t. So I'm trying to find v of t, and that's pretty straight ahead. I just exponentiate both sides. v over v naught is equal to e to the minus kappa over m t, and multiply up by v naught. Is that consistent with the, the cartoon, the, the graph that I drew? Yeah, so this is saying that when the drag force is proportional to the velocity, you exponentially relax down to 0. Okay, So we get exponential decay when we have linear drag. 